in a game full of killers, insane powers, and gross abilities. Hi, that's me, Eventic, and I am trying to create a guide for you to survive it by daylight. A way to identify this killer is really easy. You can see his traps on the ground, or you can see him strolling around the map, picking up his own traps. Trapper's main strength. I would say that Trapper can shut down loops very easily by putting down a trap on a pallet or a window. And by doing this, he forces the survivor to run away from that certain loop and reposition themselves. And keep an eye because sometimes the Trapper can even block the whole loop before you can even get to it. If he had pre-trapped it, you can't enter the loop, even if it's like a house entrance, a pallet or a window and you notice this trap, avoid these loops. One thing to keep in mind is to avoid running in the grass outside of chases. And try to keep an eye on the ground all times. And keep in mind when going against the trapper and you're using the Berg dead hard, you can get past his traps while you're injured to dash over the trap. About Trapper's add-ons, I just like to bring up a couple of them. One of them is Bloody Coil, which means that when a trap is sabotaged or disarmed by a healthy survivor, the survivor becomes injured. So look out for doing this and you can always identify Coil add-ons when the action bar is red. The second add-on is Iridescent Stone, which means that every 30 seconds a random closed trap will become set. So it can be anywhere and it can be in the most random spot ever. There are add-ons for different color variations for trapper's traps, so keep an eye out. And with time, you'll learn to see if a trap is badly placed, meaning that you can squeeze through one of the sides or even drop a pallet on the, on the trap and just vault it over. Last but not least, avoid jumping into a locker. The trapper can place a trap in front of it and block your escape, leaving you trapped when you get out. Next up, we have the Wraith. If you see a tall, transparent figure kind of thing running around the map or approaching you, it is a Wraith. Or if you don't see him, you can hear his bell from the distance. The main strength of the Wraith would be his transparency, which allows him to sneak up on survivors doing generators, chests or totems. This helps him because he doesn't emit a red light or have a terror radius while he's cloaked. When countering the Wraith, there are many ways to do so. There are some perks like Spine Shield and Spin Burst that can help you out. Spine Shield shows you if the Wraith is looking your way or approaching you. And secondly, Spin Burst. Spin Burst is really good for making distance against them. And if you have a flashlight in your hands, you can actually burn the Wraith while he is cloaked and it stuns him for a few seconds if you manage to do so. And generators in areas with bad visibility are really dangerous to work against the Wraith. So only work on them when you're sure it's 100% safe or you have a strong loop or a pallet next to you. And when going up against the Wraith, pay attention to the sounds he makes because you can actually hear his little snarl that he makes and you can hear his footsteps when he is close to you. A couple words about Wraith's add-ons. First of all, the Bone Clapper. This means that the survivors can no longer tell the distance or the direction of the Wraith while he is cloaking or uncloaking. And second of all, we have the Coxcomb Clapper, which makes the Wraith's bell completely silent. <laughs> then we have the Hillbilly. You can usually hear his chainsaw at the start of the match and he has a unique terror radius, which is really easy to hear when he approaches you. And here's a few tips how to counter Hillbilly. When you're repairing a generator, make sure you're in a position where you can see around you and have time to react if you see Billy approaching you. And try avoiding not to get caught in dead zones. Always keep an eye on the closest window or pallet. If you do get caught, try to break line of sight Try to be close to corners, rocks, or any kind of loop so he can just easily use his chainsaw on you. And you can try and hide in little corners like this to avoid the chainsaw if Billy curves around the loop. And a few words about Billy's add-ons. Billy has a number of add-ons that hide his terror radius and reduce the sound of his chainsaw. These can catch you off guard if you're not paying attention. So make sure to keep an eye out for them. 
and he has an add-on called Lopro Chains, which allows Billy to continue his chainsaw after breaking a pallet or a breakable wall. And if he hits you after that, you only lose one health state, but it's still something that you should keep in mind. Next up, the nurse. If you hear her little screech or hear her blink, you know that it's a nurse. So how to counter the nurse? Try to break line of sight. This way she needs to either predict where you're running to or just simply follow you until she sees you again. If you see the nurse approaching you from a distance already, start running. The more distance you make at the start, the more time you waste from her if she actually decides to chase you and commit to you. After breaking line of sight, try standing still, hidden, and see if she tries to predict where you'd run to and she blinks there, which wins you a lot of time to run away. There's only one add-on from the nurse that I want to bring up, and it's called the metal spoon. It decreases your grunts of pain volume after she blinks and hits you successfully. And this effect lasts on you for 60 seconds. The Huntress. If you hear this, you know it's Huntress. About Huntress's main strength, she can snipe you from all across the map, and she can down the survivor fast if you let her close. She draws a hatchet, and she can immediately M1 you after, and you're down. Huntress is really good at pressuring loops as well, because she can hold her hatchet up and just force you to make quick decisions, like dropping a pallet, or just simply taking a hit and running away. Couple of tips how to play against the Huntress. Try to break line of sight. She can throw hatchets very far and with very high speed. Huntress's base movement speed is very slow, so gaining a lot of distance is a good counterplay to her. This disables her M1 attacks completely, but keep in mind her hatchets. Keep looking back and you can hear a little wide up sound she makes like this, before she throws the hatchet, so be aware. Position yourself on loops in that way that she cannot throw hatchets straight at you. Meaning that avoid vaulting windows or pallets if she has a chance to throw a hatchet. Because you have a couple of seconds cooldown before you can move after vaulting. And keep in mind that Huntress reloads in lockers, so avoid jumping into them. A couple of words about Huntress's add-ons. First of all, eerie heads. The Huntress will be able to insta down you with her hatchets if she's using this add-on. Which is usually paired with the belt, giving her three hatchets in total. And secondly, exhaust and add-ons. The Huntress has two add-ons that can exhaust you when hit by a hatchet. Next up we have the Shape. He starts with no terror radius, so keep an eye out because he can really really creep up on you. And he has a special terror radius after hitting tier 2, which sounds like this. And a couple of words about his main strength. As I said, he can sneak up on survivors when he's undetectable, which means that it's before he hits tier 2. And he can insta down you or even kill you when he is in tier 3. And what comes to counterplaying Michael? Simply just don't let him stalk you, try to position yourself in a way that he can't see you, and don't let him get you cornered. And sometimes, pre dropping pallet is a good way to counter him, but keep in mind that he can avoid the stun and stalk you more. A couple of words about his add-ons. If the shape brings a Larry's or the game offering, it's most likely a scratched Mirror Myers. He doesn't tear up at any point, but he can see you through walls while he is stalking. And secondly, I want to bring up Tombstone Peace and Infinite Tier 3. If Myers is taking too long to get to Tier 3, it might be because he has one of these very strong add-ons. If he immediately mores somebody after going to tier 3, he has a tombstone or tombstone piece. Haggy is a very interesting killer. What comes to her main strengths is that she can teleport to any trigger trap within 40 meter range and hit the survivor immediately. This makes her a really good defender to hooks and areas. A few tips how to counter the hag. You can crouch over her traps to avoid triggering them. You can disable a trap by pointing a flashlight at it, or if it's safe, you can trigger it by running at it and quickly run away to distract the hag. Remember to look at the trap while triggering it so that your camera doesn't swing into it. If the hag is busy or carrying a survivor, you can quickly trigger traps you know of 
because she's not able to teleport while she is carrying the survivor. A couple of words about Hag's add-ons. There are two add-ons I want to bring up. First of all, Rusty Shackles. The Hag appears immediately and hits you without even a warning. This add-on doesn't give you any clue if you trigger a trap, so be very careful. Secondly, Mint Rag. This very powerful ultra rare allows the Hag to teleport to any traps across the map without anyone even triggering them. The Doctor. He's a tall, sparkly man, and he has his own terror radius like this. You can see your teammates get shocked from a distance as well. That's how you know that you're going against a doctor. About doctor's main strengths. Doctor can deny loops with his shocks, meaning that he can shock you and you can drop a pallet or vault a window or use your exhaustion perks for a few seconds. A few tips how to play against the doctor. Pre-dropping pallets before he has a chance to shock you is a very strong way to counter the doctor. If you're using dead heart, make sure to use it to gain distance, not to avoid a hit. After the doctor hooks the survivor, he most likely is gonna use his ability. A big counter to this is to be patient and hide in the locker after he hooks somebody. Using calm spirit perk is a very strong counter against the doctor. You won't scream at any times and you won't scare the crawlers on the map either. You can't do any actions when in Madness Theo 3, but keep in mind that you can still unhook survivors. And all of your actions are cancelled when you're shocked. A couple words about Doctor's add-ons that I want to bring up. First, Iridescent King. If you notice a lot of different effects, like weird terror radius, inconsistent red stain, illusory palettes, the Doctor might have this add-on. Secondly, Iridescent Queen. When you get hit by his ability, you carry around a little spark that will shock other survivors near you and bring their madness up. The Cannibal, or how people love to call him, Bubba. He is a tall guy with a yellow apron and a chainsaw. You can hear the chainsaw from a distance, it's different compared to Billy's, so don't worry. About Baba's main strength, he has an insta down chainsaw, he can down multiple survivors at once. He has fast movement speed and great mobility. Couple of tips how to counter the Baba. Don't grid on loops. But instead, drop pallets early and play safe. You can try and run tight loops and try to make him bump into a wall or a tree or even a rock. Keep in mind that he can chainsaw you through a window if you vault it too late. You can jump into a locker to avoid getting hit by the chainsaw, but if Baba bumps into the locker, he keeps sweeping for a while, so you need to learn an exact timing when to jump out in order not to get chainsawed or grabbed. About Freddy's main strength. He is very strong at loops if the survivor is in the dream world and he can teleport to any generator on the map. Some tips and tricks how to counterplay Freddy. Freddy can place bloody dream snares that slow down survivors a lot when stepped on. The best way to avoid them is to play safer on windows and pallets and not be too greedy. Remember that these snares only work if you are asleep. If you see a Freddy teleporting to your generator, you get a notification when he's teleporting to your generator so the best way to counter this is to move immediately away from that generator. So he can lure you away from that generator and make him run into you. Try not to wake up other survivors too many times. The more you wake them up, the longer it takes every time. When you get hooked, you're no longer in dream world. And when you get unhooked, your timer starts. And few add-ons I want to bring up for Freddy. First of all, the red paintbrush. This makes every survivor start in the dream world and makes it harder to wake up. Missing skill checks won't work anymore. Secondly, the chains and ropes. Set of add-ons slow you down and are more effective the more survivors are asleep. Third, illusory pallets. If you notice he has this add-on, try to keep track of which pallets are real and which are not. The pig. It's really easy to know if you're going against the pig because you can see jigsaw boxes all around the map. Piggy's main strength. She can use her stealth to catch you off guard and use her ambush at loops to land a hit. Her reverse bear traps can keep survivors busy or even kill them if they're not careful. So how to counter the pig? Well, if you know it's a pig, be aware and don't let her land a hit or grab you off a generator easily. If you see her crouch on a loop when you're getting chased, 
It's sometimes a good idea just to run away from that loop and waste more time from her. If there is no other loops nearby, consider pre-dropping the pallet so she can't use her power on the loop. If many of your teammates have the reverse bear traps on them, consider 99 the generator to give them a bit more time to take the traps off their heads. About Piggy's add-ons. She has a number of add-ons that can slow down the removal of your reverse bear trap. You will notice these add-ons if there are more than 4 boxes to search, if the searching is slower than usual. If this is the case, you will notice that the pig's animation when placing your reverse bear trap is faster than usual. <laughs> the clown. How to identify him? If you hear survivors scream, but you don't see them gain any madness, you're probably going against the clown. What comes to clown's main strengths? I would say that he can shut down loops with his bottles very easily. If he hits a survivor with his bottle, it slows down the survivor by 15%. And he can also interrupt certain actions by hitting survivors directly with his bottle, like healing or searching a chest or taking a totem. So how to counter the clown? Don't be greedy and drop pallets early. The clown's power doesn't help him much around the pallets, so it will force him to break it eventually. And keep in mind, if you are affected by his gas, you won't be able to fast fastfall windows or pallets. Couple warnings about his add-ons. First, the pinky finger. This will make the clown instant on you doing the effect of the bottle after a direct hit. And don't forget that the clown has an exhaustion add-on that could prevent you from using some of your perks. The spirit. If you hear a little whooshing sound, or you see a little blue figurine be like, eh, 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 you know it's a spirit. Her main strengths. She is largely unpredictable in chase and good spirits can use sound to their advantage and down you very quickly. Okay, what counterplays does spirit have? Well, spirit can stand still and you would have zero idea if she's facing or not. Sometimes the best counter is to stand still yourself after vaulting window or pallet and you have a line of sight to her and see what she does. Or even walk away from the loop. You can try to slow walk back the window as well. Being calm and not panic sometimes helps you even lose the spirit. The perk Iron Will is very strong against the spirit, because she relies on sound while facing. Even if spirit has Strider, which makes you louder, Iron Will decreases the volume of your grunts. Listen to her footsteps so you can locate her when she is facing. If you wait on a pallet, this is a good way to know when to pre-drop the pallet, or if you're lucky, even stun her. And last, be careful when running in the grass, because she can still see the grass move even if you walk on it. There is only one add-on I'd like to talk about, and that is the prayer beats. This allows the spirit's facing sound to be heard outside of her terror radius as well. The Legion. So how to identify that you're going against the Legion? Well, usually you see multiple teammates with the Divun status effect. Legion's main strength would be his power, Feral Frenzy. When the Legion activates his power, he starts running faster and can knock down survivors with his hits. However, he puts survivors to the deep wound state and upon hitting a survivor, the duration of his frenzy resets. While frenzy is activated, the Legion can see the heartbeat of survivors making it hard to hide against him. During Frenzy, Legion can quickly vault over pallets and windows, so be careful around loops and don't waste any pallets. To counter the Legion, it is best to stay away from teammates and avoid them from hitting multiple survivors at once. You can cancel the Legion's power by making them miss a hit or dropping a pallet on them. About Legion's add-ons, there is only one add-on that I want to bring up, and it's the iridescent pin. If you hear a map-wide intense tear radius, but the Legion is nowhere around, he is running this add-on. The Legion can quickly vault over pallets and break them as he is vaulting it. The Plague. If you hear a sound at the start and see pools around the map, it is a plague. The Plague's main strength would be her power, the Wild Purge. This can make you broken and deny any healing for infected survivors. Her secondary power, the Corrupt Purge, is a very powerful range attack that can down multiple survivors very quickly. Cleansing on a pool of devotion will quickly heal you to full health, but it gives the plague the chance to use her secondary power. 
If you hear this sound effect, it means Plague drank from her pools and for the next minute or so she will have her ability and you can stun her out of her power as well. Interacting with anything infected will also infect you, such as generators, totems or even survivors. The plague can start the trial with several fountains already corrupted thanks to the apple add-ons. Secondly, the iridescent seal gives the plague her corrupt purge when a generator is completed. Ghostface. If you see someone marked or get exposed yourself, you're going against the Ghostface. His main strength. He is very stealthy, small and can catch you off guard and make you exposed, which will let him down you in one hit. Be aware of your surroundings at all times. Do generators in places where you can see around you. If you see him stalking you, your best bet is to break the line of sight and try to reveal him. To reveal Ghostface, you will need to look at him with your camera. You can tell when you start to reveal him by this sound. If you do get marked, try your best to find the safest pallet or window to gain some cover and distance. Demogorgon. You can identify the Demogorgon with his unique terror radius and you can hear his screeches from across the map. About his main strengths, his shred ability lets him destroy pallets and land hits more easily. His power works only in a straight line, which means he won't be able to use it around corners very efficiently. Keep in mind when standing close or on his portals, he can see your heartbeat if he's using his ability. Disarming a portal only takes a few seconds, but Demo can easily replace them, so avoid disarming his portal unless you feel like it's necessary. Every time he uses his portals, you can hear this sound. When you're standing on his portal, you become oblivious, which means you can't hear his terror radius, so keep an eye out. The Demogorgon has an add-on called Red Moss which allows him to stay undetectable for 10 seconds after emerging from a portal. The Oni. He is very easy to recognize because he has his own unique terror radius. About Oni's main strengths. Once he is powered up, he gains the ability to insta down survivors and break pallets. When the Oni has his power filled, there will be a global sound like this. And when he activates his power, you will hear this sound. The Oni can move very fast and make sharp turns to hit with his power. Oni can use his power to down a survivor and pick them up immediately. He will lose his power, but not the charge of the power. There is only one add-on I'd like to bring up, and that is the Bloody Glow which allows him to see auras of survivors when they walk over blood orbs. Next up, the Deathslinger. You might hear a shot in the distance or hear his unique terror radius, and that's how you know you're going against the Deathslinger. About Deathslinger's main strengths, he can shoot through almost any gap and quickly get you injured or even down you in many situations. He also inflicts the deep wound status, keeping survivors injured for longer. If you got spot, make as much distance as possible before he catches up to you. You will hear a little sound when he's aiming at you like this. If his shot lands on you, try to put obstacles between you and him so that the chain will break faster. If a teammate is in trouble, you can get in front of them to protect them from a shot or make it harder for the killer to land a hit on them. A couple of words about Deathslinger's add-ons. The iridescent coin can let the Deathslinger insta down you if you get shot from 15 meters away. The Executioner, more commonly known as Pyramid Head, has a long ranged attack that can hit survivors through obstacles. He also has the ability to sacrifice survivors using cages instead of hooks, which counters strong survivor perks like borrowed time or decisive strike. Be careful when unhooking, you can both get hit by his power. Some ways to counter him would be playing unpredictably. Doing this can help you run loops and make the pyramid head miss their attacks. You can also crouch over his trails to avoid being tormented. 
When rescued from the cage, both the rescuer and the caged one loses the torment status. 